Hey there. Um, okay, so today's episode isn't quite as fun as the other ones go, because at the end of it, you won't have any new functionality. However, uh, it's kind of necessary because right now our code is getting a little unwieldy, so we need to spend some time refactoring it, maybe just talking about the whole um, idea behind object-oriented programming to begin with. So uh, what I'd like to do first is take a look at your scripts, and we will first be opening up the find matches script, because that's the one that has um, the most issues that we need to fix. So let me get this open, and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we're taking a look at the uh, find matches script, and one of the big things in object-oriented programming is if you're ever repeating your code, you're doing it wrong. And we're repeating our code quite a bit in here. So let's just kind of take a look. So in our find all matches coroutine here, which is what we're calling from the other class in order to find the matches, um, we have a few different things that we're repeating. First of all, uh, we're checking for row bombs and column bombs in both the uh, left and right and the up and down methods. Secondly, we're also checking to see if um, the current match contains left dot, and we're adding left dot, right dot, we're adding right dot, current dot, we're adding current dot. We could just to simply make this another method where uh, we're looking for three different game objects and then checking that for each game object. And that would make it much simpler. And then that way we're not repeating our code in two different places, which means that our code is simplified, which makes it much easier to trace back any errors that we may or may not have. So um, let's take a look here. Let's start with the um, finding the column bombs and the row bombs. So I'm going to create two new methods up here. Um, the first one is going to be a private list of game objects. And I'm going to call this uh, git, or uh, how about is row bomb? And this is going to need, because it's returning something, this isn't a void. A void is a function that just does something and doesn't need to return anything. This is going to return uh, a list of objects. And that means that somewhere in this method, I have to have a return statement. I'm certain we've talked about this before, but just to say it. Um, so until we add a return statement for all possible code paths, this is going to be a red underlined, which annoys the, the heck out of me, but it is what it is. So I want to check to see if it's a row bomb. And what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just in the first part because I'm checking left and right. The row bomb is easier to do because if the row bomb is for either the current, the left, or the right dot, it's we just have to get the same row that all three of these are in. It's a little more complex down here because we have to get the pieces that are in whichever row that's in. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pass in three different arguments for this. The first is gonna be a uh, game object. Uh, we'll call this dot one a game object, we'll call this dot two. Actually, let's not even do game objects. Let's do the dots themselves because that's again gonna make our code simpler. So we'll say dot, dot one, dot, capital D. Ooh, I have to have a, there we go. Dot, dot two, and dot, dot three. So the reason I'm doing these three different dots is these can represent the left, current, and right or it could represent the up, current, and down. So that way I can have the same method apply to both uh, the left and right and the up and down because they're all really just looking for three different dots. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a list. Oop. Uh, yeah, no, I'll leave that game object. I'm gonna create a list of game objects and I'm gonna call this um, current dots, maybe? Yeah. And I'll initialize this to a new list of type game object. Uh, okay, cool. Now, I'm going to use the idea behind the finding row bombs in the up and down part here. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's a little more generalized. So, I'm going to grab this logic here. Yep, I copy that, 
and I'm going to paste it into here. I'm going to have to make quite a few modifications, so it may be, maybe I shouldn't have pasted it. But so what I want to do, because I'm calling all of this git component stuff, that's why I used dots here, because now I don't have to use that git component. So I'm going to do um, if dot one is a row bomb, then I want to get row pieces not from J, but from dot one dot row. And now that's nice and easy. And instead of doing up dot, I'm going to do dot two. And instead of having to get the component from it now, I can just say is row bomb. And now I want to get these components not from j plus one, but from dot two dot row. So already it's so much simpler. And then instead of being down dot, this is going to be dot three. So I'll do dot three dot is row bomb. And then I want to get them from dot three dot row. Okay. And now I'm going to return uh, current dots. And because this is an inside an if statement, and this is the only code path that just goes straight down here. Um, I don't have to worry about having another return statement anywhere. Okay. So now I have this list of game objects called is row bomb and it takes in dots one, two, and three and creates a list of current dots and returns those current dots. So what I want to do now <laughs> and then the get column pieces. Okay, good. This takes in uh, game object, da da da. And then adds them to, it should add them to current matches. Okay, it returns that. Okay. Okay. And yeah, we're unioning it. I'm just making sure that this is going to be on the current matches. Okay, cool. So now if I go down here to where I was doing that is row bomb stuff, which is right here. I'm going to replace this with um, current matches dot union. And the union I want to match it with is, is row bomb. And now I need to pass in three dots. So the three dots I'm going to pass in are current dot dot get component dot and I can, oh, hold on let me actually make this even simpler here so it's gonna squawk at me for just a second so I have to live with that red line there but if I go up here um, actually sorry right here uh, and got my game object let's change well I don't want to change too much let's make a dot um, and we'll call it up dot dot which is super confusing. I'm going to set this equal to up dot dot get component, and I want to set it to the dot component. This is again all so that I can limit how many times I have to do that get component stuff. And we'll do dot down dot dot is equal to down dot dot get component dot. Um, okay. So, okay, cool. So now I want to do is row bomb of, oh, and I want to do the same thing for the current dot. So all the way up here, where I have my current dot game object. If I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. Where I have my current dot game object, I'm going to say dot current dot dot uh, dot dot is equal to current dot get component dot. I'm doing all of this so that I'm storing references to these things, um, which not only makes it run a little bit faster, um, but also makes it so that my code is simpler and more readable. So I want to get the row bomb for up dot dot, current dot dot, and down dot dot which sounds really confusing. But now that I have that there, I can get rid of all of this code here that was checking to see if anything was row bombs. So this, if current dot is a row bomb, if up dot is a row bomb, and if uh, down dot is a row bomb. Instead, I'm checking them all in this method. 
right up here. Now, I can also replace all of this with a call to uh, current matches dot union. So current matches dot union. And I want to do the same thing for my left dots and my right dots that I did. Or I'm going to make a reference to the dot script on them. So dot left dot dot is equal to left dot dot get component dot and then we'll do the same thing for the right dot so dot right dot dot is equal to the right dot get component dot and now I'm going to do left dot dot current dot dot and right dot dot and now I can get rid of why well, I already did um, why is that barking at me oh <laughs> I didn't actually pass in uh, is row bomb okay and then I need to another parentheses back here oops stop that uh, okay cool so I'm gonna save this um, all right, so now I've replaced two different methods with one, or not two different methods, but two different long strings of spaghetti code with one method that is reusable now, because now it just takes in three dots. I don't actually have a reference to a number anywhere in here. There's no magic numbers now. It's way simpler. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to do a similar method for column bombs. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it down here. And instead of being a row bomb now, this is going to be a column bomb. And I don't have to change my parameters, because my parameters are going to be the same. This list of game objects is local to this method, so I don't need to change that. I just need to change this from being row bomb to column bomb. And instead of being dot one dot row, it's dot one dot column and change this to column bomb and instead of this being dot row it's dot column um, oh, and I don't want to do get row pieces I want to do get column pieces Aha. so pretty much everywhere I see row I'm just replacing with column because that's how I built my methods so let me get rid of this column pieces dot three dot column and is column bomb uh, okay let me read through this so we got our list of game objects is column bomb for dots one two and three um, we got our list of current dots we're checking to see if dot one is a column bomb then we're going to take our current matches and union it with column pieces for dot one dot column dot two is a column bomb current matches union dot two dot column dot three is column bomb current matches union dot three dot column and they're all get column pieces so we're good so now where I have these is column bombs I can remove that and now I can replace it with current matches dot union is column bomb and I'll still do, still do left dot dot current dot dot and right dot dot and then and there we go I just cleared out a whole bunch of our code and now I can do the same thing here I can do current matches dot union uh, is column bomb I can do up dot dot current dot dot and right dot dot or sorry, not right, down dot dot. There we go. Uh, okay, so again, we've made this method so much simpler now. Now, we can do the same thing for all of this stuff here. Because right now, we're just checking, we're adding to our current matches the left dot, the right dot, the current dot, and then changing the 
their components to be uh, is matched. So what I can do now is I can create another private list of game objects. And I'm going to call this one, uh, let's see, get nearby pieces. Dot one, or sorry, dot, dot one, dot, dot two, and dot, dot three. Okay, now, instead of doing, do, 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 I'm going to grab all of this. Copy this. I'm gonna paste it right there. So, all right. So if not current matches contains, um, <laughs> actually, let's not make these dots. Let's make these game objects. And the reason I'm making these game objects instead is because we're adding the game object to a list. So it's gonna be. I mean, it's six and one half a dozen of the other at this point, whether it's easier to do the the game object or the dot, and I'm just going to do the game object. So instead of being left dot, this is going to be dot one. Instead of being left dot, this is dot one. Instead of being left dot, this is dot one. And I could even modularize this further because I'm doing the same thing again and again. I could create another method and call it like, um, here, let me show you. I could do um, private void uh, add to list and match. And then this is gonna take in a game object. Dot. And now, instead of having to have this code be repeated, because again, if you're repeating code, you're doing it wrong, um, I can just take this code here, paste it here, and say if current matches contains, instead of dot one, I'm gonna call this just dot, current matches dot add dot, and then dot dot get component. And now I can remove um, all of this, and in place of it, I can say, uh, add to list and match, and I want to match dot one. And there we go. I can also take all of this code out and do add to list and match dot two. And I can also take all of this code out and do add to list and match dot three. So now. I actually don't need this to be a list. This can just be a void because I don't need to return it anywhere. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So now I've created these two methods that are going to replace all of this and a bunch more code in the other one, and it makes it way more readable. So now this is nearby pieces. So I'm going to add get nearby pieces and it needs three game objects. So that's gonna be uh, left dot, current dot, and right dot. And then I can get rid of all of this code here. Now, look how much simpler that is versus what we had. I can do the same thing here. I can get rid of all of this code and replace it with get nearby pieces and I want to do up dot current dot and down dot now if I save this I've made my code so much easier um, I'm checking for row bombs column bombs and then I'm adding the pieces I'm checking for row bombs column bombs adding the pieces now when I add another check for bomb method in here it's going to be way simpler to do. So let me save my script. And here's the moment of truth. Let's see if I broke this. So it's going to save down here. Um, it's thinking. OK, cool. I didn't break it yet. Doesn't mean I didn't break it. Let's hit play. Oh, huh. OK, before I do that, 
Um, I was messing around with something earlier, so I made it so I only had four elements. I'm going to pump up my number of elements here. Let's go to eight. And then when you change the number of elements in an array like this, it just duplicates the last element. So I don't want all those orange dots instead. I want to go to my prefabs. Red, salmon, teal, and yellow, teal. There we go. And now if I go back to my board, oop, let me lock this in. Red, salmon, teal, and yellow. I've probably, actually, no, it's going to be easier to do it this way. So I'm going to replace red underneath orange, replace salmon underneath that. You guys almost certainly do not have to do this because you, I mean, maybe you were, maybe you were messing around, but I certainly was. So I got two oranges now. I'll replace that second orange with a yellow. Okay, so now I've got eight different kinds of dots. So I'm going to hit play. And we'll see if any play breaks it. Okay, cool. Moment of truth now. Let's see if I still get matches. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, sorry for that abrupt cut there. Uh, I realized there was one more thing we needed to fix, and then I ran out of time. So I'm recording this actually on another day. Anyway, uh, okay. So there were some comments in um, the previous videos that um, the finding bombs method was starting to break, and here is the reason why. So right now, yours probably doesn't have current matches clear. It almost certainly has remove, and then you want to remove all dots at column and row. Um, oh, yeah, by the way. So I'm in the board class here, and inside the board class, I'm at the destroy matches at method. So the problem has to do with the way that I had created my logic here. So apologies for that. This is a work in progress. Anyway. So when we're looking at our destroy matches at, so destroy matches gets called first. And destroy matches goes through all of the dots using the double for loops. And it checks to see if all dots isn't null. And if it's not null, it calls destroy matches at. And then when destroy matches at gets called, it checks to see if that dot is matched. And if it is, it then checks to see what the current count of the, um, of the list of current matches is. Uh, then if that current count is four or seven, then it will um, uh, find, call the check bomb method, and then it'll remove that dot. Now, when it removes this dot, this makes the um, count of the current matches method one less. So if it was five, it'll now make it four. So that means that when it goes through to the next dot, it'll check to see if that dot is matched. And now the current matches count is four, when it should have been five. So what I want to do here is instead of uh, having this line here to remove them, I want to leave this alone. Or sorry, not leave this alone. I want to take that whole line out. And then when I'm done iterating through all of the matches, then I want to clear the list entirely. So I want to do find matches dot current matches dot clear so that the list will be cleared entirely. Okay, sorry about that weird cut again. Um, if anybody didn't know, I'm a teacher and I record these videos during my prep period if I don't have anything to do or after school if I don't have anything else I need to do. So anyway, um, that means that things get to be interrupted by <laughs> announcements and uh, students coming in. Anyway, so back to this. So uh, we're going to clear it here. And then that should make it so that it doesn't register as being four or seven by kind of counting down. And then also once it reaches the end of this, it will destroy the current number of matches. So I want to take a look at my find matches here really quickly where we do the check bomb and make sure that I'm not removing this from our current matches either. So no, we're just making it a column bomb. We're making it not matched, but that doesn't affect uh, whether or not it's in the find matches list yet. That won't, that won't happen until like the next uh, update tick. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. And I'm going to hit play. As soon as this is done compiling, I'm going to test this out uh, and see if it works. Uh, see if I see any weird stuff. And just because I don't see any weird stuff doesn't mean there isn't weird stuff in the code. So if you yourself are having some issues that come up when you're playing the game, it doesn't act the way it's supposed to, and you have questions about why that is, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, 
but I'm just going to play this really quickly and see if I can find any any weird stuff happening. Uh, and if it does, then we'll fix that too. Other than that, um, we might be we might be a good for now. So I'm going to speed this footage up. Okay, so I'm stopping the footage here because this is one of the situations where um, it would have counted as uh, match four before. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to swap the yellow dot with this teal dot, and that's going to make six things in our current matches. So I'm actually going to do that really quickly and then pause the game. So let me do that. Oops, I was not fast enough. All right, so I'm going to... Okay, so right now our current matches have six elements in it. If I tick forward, what would have happened before is that as it went through each of these pieces in the game board, it would have gone, meh, 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 meh. it would have reached here, and here the count would have been six, so it wouldn't have accessed the column bomb. However, it would remove this item from the list, and then it would go here. Now the count is five. So if we had implemented the color bomb method already, it would read this as a match of five, which is incorrect. Um, and then it'll remove this from the list, and now the list count is four. And then it'll go here. And now it'll read the list as having four things in it, which means it'll create a color bomb when it shouldn't, or not a color bomb, a column or row bomb when it shouldn't. This is just two separate match threes right next to each other. So now, if I unpause, we shouldn't get any weird column or row bombs. Let's check it out. Okay, cool. So, yeah. That was this weird edge case that was popping up that that I noticed. Um, you might have had some different mileage, like you might have noticed other weird edge cases or whatever. Uh, and if you have, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm going to post the source code link in the description to this video, so you guys can check it if you're having any other issues that I might not have covered and maybe I don't uh, answer as quickly as you might like. Um, you can check the source code and see what the source code has to say. So. Um, yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to know exactly when I post a new video. Otherwise, uh, have yourself a wonderful day. Goodbye.